Hello again, and welcome to another exciting episode of Social Studies. We are up to assignment 3.16 or 3.16, and in the timeline notes, this is part seven, and that means there's probably only one part left when you'll see we're almost done with this. So in our timeline notes, we are we should have already... Oh, slow down there. We should have already filled in up to the Second Continental Congress, 1775. We did not do the Battle of Bunker Hill there, which might give you a hint of what we're doing today. And today we are not doing the Declaration of Independence. So we're basically just doing a little bit here. So this should not take you too long. So please do not fast forward through this. Please do not skip it. Just bear with me and watch and listen and enjoy. So the Olive Branch Petition, as we left off on, this was, um, we saw it in John Adams, the Continental Congress, the Second Continental Congress meeting in Philadelphia after some debate about whether to support the Massachusetts militia or not. Um, this was after Lexington and Concord, they decide to first try one more time to make peace by sending an olive branch, not a real olive branch, but uh, basically a letter or a petition asking the king for forgiveness and trying to be friends again. Now, it's going to take many months for that to reach King George and to get hear back from him. So um, things are kind of on hold after they do that. Meanwhile, back in Boston, after Lexington and Concord, um, remember at Lexington and Concord, the British tried to seize weapons and ammo out here in Concord, and Sam Adams and John Hancock here in Lexington, they failed to do that. They were forced to retreat back to Boston. They suffered heavy casualties along the way. Now, they are centered in Boston here, and there are thousands of troops here, thousands and thousands of redcoats or British troops or regulars. They are mostly centered, and there, there's some scattered around other places, but almost all of them are located here in Boston. Now, these militias from all of these little towns around Massachusetts and, and New England in general, they their numbers grew more and more people joined the fight and there was a period of time kind of just waiting to see what happened next now they minutemen their spy networks etc re heard reports that the redcoats the the british soldiers in other words were going to try to establish a fort right across the bay here um so here's Boston. If we zoom in a little here, this place called Bunker Hill and Breed's Hill, which are two hills in Charlestown, which is right across the water here. Um, so before, if they did that, that would give them a high vantage point and they'd be able to may much more effectively shut off the harbor. They had been doing that for a while, but this would really give them a place overlooking Boston. They could station cannons there. It would be potentially dangerous for the people of Boston. So the Minutemen decide that they're going to beat them to it. So these, um, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of of Minutemen, of uh, these volunteer militias, they start sort of occupying these two hills and they start camping out there and eventually they start to build forts there, or at least early attempts at forts. Now, when the British find out about that, they immediately decide there you can't let that happen. So they are going to rush across and attack. Now, even though it's called the Battle of Bunker Hill, most of the fighting takes place here on Breed's Hill because they're trying to get this land. But it doesn't matter. We'll call it Bunker Hill. The This is in June of 1775, so remember that it was the 18th, not 18th, 19th of April in 75. Um, so we had May, June. This is about two months later when this happens. And it ends up being a major defeat for the Minutemen. They are, they're just overwhelmed. The British march up these hills, and but there's intense heavy fighting. Um, supposedly this is when the Minutemen were told so that they don't waste their shots. 
that they don't fire until they see the whites of their eyes. Eventually, though, after intense fighting, the Minutemen retreat back down the opposite side of Monk Hill and escape out this way towards Harvard. Um, and the British do capture the hill, so it's a victory for them. But it's a very, very costly victory because they lose, um, well, about a thousand casualties, which includes people who are killed or injured enough so that they can no longer fight. So it's a very costly victory for the British. This is a famous painting of the British redcoats marching up Bunker Hill and the intense fighting that goes on, etc. All right, there is, if you ever go to Boston, there's still a Bunker Hill memorial or monument um, on, it, it looks a little bit like a miniature Washington monument, if you're familiar with that. All right, so to fill in the notes there, this is what you need. Major important battle near Boston. British defeat colonists, heavy losses. The colonists, though, gain confidence that they might actually be able to fight with this British army, which is so powerful that maybe they're not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're, they're not, they are beatable, I guess. Um, so it kind of gives them confidence. It kind of rallies more and more people to the cause. And for example, down in Virginia, um, a guy named Patrick Henry, who we never really learn about, but he's giving a speech to the House of Burgesses, trying to convince Virginia to help out the Massachusetts militia. And he gives this famous speech in which he supposedly says, give me liberty or give me death. Um, we don't have to worry too much about that. What we do need to know is a little bit of common sense. And by common sense, I am talking about the famous pamphlet written by a guy named Thomas Paine. This is a picture of the original common sense, Thomas Paine. Now, Thomas Paine had come to America um, only a short time, maybe less than a year before this pamphlet, as it was called, was published. Now, this pamphlet was like 47 pages long, and it's basically like a small paperback book. They didn't really have such things as paperback books then. All books were kind of hardcover, so that's they called it a pamphlet. It's kind of like a paperback book. What is common sense? Well, basically, up until this time, remember, we were not fighting to gain independence. We were not fighting, like that was not the purpose. We were trying to regain our rights as British citizens. We were wanted the mother country to treat us better, but we didn't want a new mother country. We didn't want to get rid of the mother country. Nobody talked about that. Now this in early 1776, January of 1776, this guy named Thomas Paine publishes this pamphlet called Common Sense. And basically he just takes down the whole monarchy and says that the idea of some people being better than others or more important because or being able to govern others just because of the family they're born into is ridiculous. It says it's ridiculous that a little island in England cover could control a large continent, America. Um, and he says basically just comes out and says it is common sense that these colonies should be independent. They should not be ruled by England. And this takes off like wildfire, becomes a huge bestseller. People all over the colonies are reading it, talking about it. They go to taverns at night and listen to people read it out loud to them. Um, it's just, it becomes this big, big, it, it sweeps the colonies. And all of a sudden, the idea of declaring independence is in people's head. They, they hadn't really thought of it much before, but now... Um, it's really becomes a more common thing and it's not going to take us very long if this comes out in, I don't want to spoil anything, but this comes out in January of 1776 and um, you may have heard of the 4th of July, not to, to, not to ruin what's coming. But anyways, for the notes here, you can read this, you can pause it, pamphlet by Com Thomas Paine, said the colonies should declare independence, first open talk of independence and very influential. Okay, and I am pretty sure that is all we're going to do today. Uh, do we want to do, uh, how long that? I'll try to do this real quickly. The British, remember, had the King George, the Olive Branch Petition. Um, that was sent back in, I believe it was June, 
in the April, March, April, May, maybe May or June. Uh, I think no, actually early July. I'm sorry. I know it doesn't matter. You don't need to know the date. It was just driving me nuts. Early July of 1775, they send this letter to King George saying basically we love you. You are our king. You are the greatest. We apologize for all of the troubles. Can we be friends again? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Now it takes many months for them to respond. It is not until, well, I'm not sure exactly when it, but it takes many, many months to hear back from King George when he basically is going to tell them his quote is the colonies are in open and avowed rebellion. The die is now cast. The colonies must either submit or triumph. He basically says, your apology isn't good enough. You need to either completely surrender and give up on this idea of independence or give up on this idea of representation in parliament or give up on this idea of you telling us what to do at all, or we're going to kill you. So he does not respond too kindly. He says the colonies must submit or be destroyed. This really helps to unite the Continental Congress members in support of independence. And you can fill in the last part of your notes using that. I think that covers everything. And yes, that is all. So um, I hope you enjoyed this episode and come back next time. And we will have something more exciting even. Uh, Thank you.